Dear friends, good morning from Hong Kong. Thank you for your interest in this small online test we prepared. In the past week, almost 300 brave volunteers took the test and left us with some very useful comments. So, who took the test? More than half of them were dentists with a significant portion of students and specialists. Furthermore, three quarters of them were male and about 40% of them had completed 16 or more wisdom tooth surgeries. Now let's uh, jump straight to the important part. As you can see here, the most popular answer was actually F, followed by D with C at the third place. So who was right? Let's take a closer look into this test. The task was to fill in the blank space corresponding to a horizontal slice extending approximately 4 cm distal of the first molar. This included the second molar and an impacted wisdom tooth. Now, to help us with reconstructing this, we have one vertical slice for each 2 mm of the space and the panoramic slice. The red line marks the slice that we want to reproduce. This is a simplified test, as it already gives you six options to choose from. Maybe the easiest way to deal with such a task is to try to eliminate first the options that do not fit and then see what are we left with. Looking at the vertical slices, if we start from the most mesial slice marked with number 70, we can see, for example, that the bone is much lower than the red line. This means there is absolutely no bone at the lingual side of the second molar at the level of the red line for at least the first three slices. Consequently, in the horizontal slice we want to reproduce, there will be no bone lingual of the second molar for the first 8 mm. This finding alone should be enough to reject slices A and B, because in these drawings there appears thick bone lingual of the second molar. Also, slices E and F are to be discarded for the same reason. There might be many more observations we can have with regards to the angle of the wisdom tooth, for example, but at this stage, this observation is enough to leave us with only two slides to choose from, C and D. Looking closer at these two images, you can see they're identical, with the only difference being in the location and the size or the footprint of the mandibular canal. In C, we have a small and round shape of the mandibular canal, while on the D, we have a longer elliptic shape that extends from mesial to distolingual. Which one is the right one? Indeed, the long elliptic shape of D is what we would expect to see in a horizontal slice, while the small round is more expected in a vertical slice, or true. But remember, we are now distal of the wisdom tooth and already in the ascending ramus. The mandibular canal is also ascending, so how is this exposed on the horizontal level depends on how steep is the angle it rises in the ramus. If the nerve is ascending in a steep angle to the ramus, then most likely it will leave a small footprint into the level we're trying to reproduce, like it's presented in the option C. If, however, the canal is not ascending for some part and stretches parallel to the horizontal level for some millimeters, we could see a projection as it is in image D. So which one is right? Going back to the vertical slices, let's try to identify the position of the nerve in relation to the level we want to reproduce. Let's trace the nerve in the slice 79, where you can see it is significantly lower than the level we're aiming for. And then it is only crossing the red line for slices 83 and 84 before it moves higher. That means the nerve is ascending rather steep, crossing the red line for less than three vertical slices, leaving a footprint which should be no more than four to five millimeter long. We can confirm that if we look into the panoramic slice. Here you can see the actual projection of the nerve on the level we want to reproduce is quite small because it is ascending in a steep angle. So you might have guessed it by now, the correct image is actually C. This was the third most popular choice. 
more than half of the participants actually opted for choice D or F, both of which included the longer version of the mandibular canal. If you're one of them, don't worry, you're not alone. It is a very common interpretation and might be because of our predisposition to expect the mandibular canal to be stretching in a horizontal path from mesial to distal. Maybe this can help us reflect a little bit on how our own predispositions can often mislead us from interpreting what we see. In a study we have just concluded and which we are about to publish on a more complex model, we found that the most difficult element to reproduce or visualize is actually the mandibular canal, the very structure we cannot afford to misread in implant dentistry. This was just a quick opportunity for us to initiate a discussion, which I hope we can now continue online. There is a lot of important things one can learn from studying how we read 3D radiography and then use all this to improve the way we teach and the way we learn anatomy and surgery. So thank you very much for your interest and have a great weekend.